All right. It is great to see you guys. It feels like it's been longer than it actually has been, uh, but I hope you all are thoroughly enjoying your winter break, that it's been fun and just good time with, with family and friends, and that you guys had an awesome Christmas. Uh, but welcome to this, this winter break midweek tonight. Uh, I'm really excited, as always, to be preaching the word to you guys. And just, uh, oh, there goes my iPad. <laughs> just a little bit of a heads up that after my lesson tonight, we're going to have a time where uh, we want to give you guys some time to reflect on the lesson and to have a notebook out or a note on your phone and to, to think about some decisions that you want to make that will help you start the new year strong spiritually. So as you're listening tonight, as we're diving into the scriptures, um, just keep in mind that we do want to give some time of reflection at the end, and then we'll have a time that you can share uh, some decisions that you've made. Maybe there's something you've already thought about. Maybe tonight there's something that uh, that will strike you and you'll decide to do, but we will have a little bit of time of sharing at the end. Uh, but tonight we're going to, as Gigi mentioned, talk about starting strong in 2023. Uh, this coming weekend, we wrap up the year 2022. Can you believe it? That the end of the year is is upon us. It's crazy. Uh, it doesn't feel like too long ago we were having this sort of lesson a year ago. Uh, but the end of the year is it's a natural time uh, to look back, to reflect, and to think about how we can continue to grow closer to God. Uh, should it be the only time we reflect on our walk with God and, and make decisions to grow? No, that should be something we're constantly doing as disciples. But it is a great time. It's a healthy time to make decisions when it comes to our relationship with God. Amen. And so I don't know about you, but I've had some, some new years, some starts to the new year that I've done great holding to spiritual decisions. And I've had other years that I might have said I was going to do something, but ended up not holding to what I set out to do for God. Uh, maybe the first month and a half went well with a, a quiet time plan or with some spiritual goals for my character. But after that first couple months and a half, um, you know, started to see not the same results. And so, um, you know, maybe you can even think about this time last year, decisions that you made for 2022. Uh, maybe you can think about as you as you headed into 2022, what were some things that you wanted to grow in? Uh, that this time last year, you told yourself, man, this, this year in 2022, I want to see victory in that. You know, and I pray and I hope that you have seen growth in this past year. You know, I just want to say that I've seen this ministry grow in so many ways uh, over this past year in 2022. And, uh, and you know way more than I do the ways that you've grown and, and God has led you uh, to that growth. And, and so I pray that it's been a great year for you, but maybe maybe for some of us, we feel like, you know what, I, I feel like I really could have grown more. Or maybe there's certain areas of your discipleship or just your relationships in Christ that you, you feel like you could have excelled more, right? But no matter what happens, I think we have to realize that we, we have to start strong. Um, and no matter what your 2022 was like, uh, and if you stuck to those things you set out to do, the good news is that there's always a, a new day. There's a new day tomorrow. There's a new year upon us, and we can start strong. And so if you want to, to come to know God in a deeper way in 2023, if you want to become more like Christ, it all starts with having the right motivation. So as we talk about, hey, I want to start strong in this new year, we got to start with talking about motivation. Before we can get into any practicals or any ways that we can start strong, it's healthy to ask the question, am I feeling motivated? Motivated to grow in your walk with God. It's important to ask yourself, am I feeling hopeful that this year I can become more like Jesus? that this year can be better than last year. Where is your motivation at? Are you feeling motivated to grow? And hey, amen, uh, you know, for this time of rest that we have, it's okay if you haven't 
made this vision board on your desk and have a whole plan and your motivations at a 10 out of 10, that's okay. But in general, just where's your motivation at? And again, maybe 2022 was, was hard. Maybe there were aspects of the year that were hard for you. Um, but maybe there's other aspects that you feel like you grew. And if it was that kind of year and you felt like, man, what a, what a great year of growth. Just want to encourage you, keep going, keep growing, keep excelling. But again, um, if we want to start strong, we certainly can't start strong if we're being weighed down by, by hopelessness and by doubt that we really can grow. If we're letting things that happened in the past still weigh us down, we, we can't start strong if we don't have the right motivation or mo any motivation at all to grow. And so as part of tonight's lesson, my hope is to help bring you hope, bring you encouragement through the scriptures uh, that, that you can find motivation from God um, and, and that you can feel motivated and hopeful rather than than stuck in doubting and doubting that God can bring change in your life. And so whatever happened last year, guys, we got to, we got to look forward. We got to look ahead. Philippians three verses 12 to 14. Paul says, not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I love this passage. I love Paul's attitude here. You know, he's saying, hey, I, I don't consider that I've really taken hold fully of what I want yet, mainly because he's not with Jesus in heaven yet. But he says, there's one thing that I do. And I think we got to learn this from Paul here. He says, I, I'm forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Now, does that mean Paul is not learning from the past? Certainly not. I think he learned from his past, which really was persecuting the church and killing Christians. He learned, but he wasn't going to be defined by who he was before he was an apostle. And he says, I, I press on toward the goal to win the prize. And so that's got to be our attitude as we think about this new year. Let's adopt this thinking of Paul, this attitude and saying, let me strain towards what God has in store for me in 2023. Amen. Amen. Let's press on because God is calling us heavenward. He's not calling you back to 2022 or 21 or 2020. He's calling you heavenward, forward, right? Forward thinking towards Christ, maturing in our walk with God. And so this scripture, that should kind of help us as we think about this idea of motivation. But what should be all of our motivation? What should be our motivation to grow and to start strong. And the answer to that is God's love for us, his grace, his compassion. You know, Manny's brother, Caesar Coronado, did an awesome lesson a couple of weeks ago on the grace of God. It's God's love is what should always motivate us to grow closer to Jesus. So here's the good news, guys, is that your source of motivation doesn't come from within yourself or, or how, how well your so-called performance is spiritually. No, the source of our motivation to please God is something outside of ourselves, which is the love of God, which we come to know in the scriptures and through the spirit. Amen. And so his love is this, it's this outside power source that anyone can plug into and access biblical motivation for spiritual maturation. It's this amazing power, his love, that even if you're not motivated by it right now, you can be because it's him that's offering it and not something within it of ourselves. But we do need to go 
to the good stuff, to Jesus. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, we all love the scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 14, Paul says, for Christ's love compels us. That word compel in the Greek is really more so the word control. His love controls us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. And so Paul, he starts this this passage here in verse 14 by saying, hey, Christ's love compels us. He's not just talking about himself. He's talking about the body of Christ. Us as a body of believers, we should be motivated by Christ's love. Because it's the only thing that will never go away. Your emotions will, will change, right? Your, your different exterior motivations outside of Jesus will wane, but Christ's love will always be strong. And if so, if you want to start strong, start with Christ's love. Start with his love being your motivation. And he says that this love, it's, it's going to compel us. And this love, it's this, we're convinced that Jesus died for us. And he did this so that we would live for him, that we would no longer live for ourselves, that we would live for him. And so we need to, to look at this and ask ourselves, man, am I motivated in the way that Paul is describing here? And also, do, do we get excited? I, you know, if you just look in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 5, he says, if anyone is in Christ, right? If you're a disciple of Jesus, he says, the new creation has come. The old is gone. That's exciting, guys. That whoever you were before Christ or maybe whatever tainted your walk with God in 2022, the reality is that Christ wants to bring something new new life to your life if you let him. God wants to do something new, something fresh in your discipleship in 2023, but it's only going to come through his love. Not how great you are, not how long you read your Bible in the day, not, not you know how many D times you had in the month. Those are all great things and important, but it's, are we in touch with his love for us? And so on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you by God's love to please him? Where is your motivation at? Because if our motivation isn't there, it doesn't matter how, how perfect your goals are, your, your 2023 quiet time reading plan. It doesn't matter how perfect those things are. If there's not a biblical motivation to grow, then our growth will only, there, there will be a cap on it. There will, it'll be limited. If we're not motivated by God to live for God, then we'll be motivated by worldly things and fall into worldly thinking. Amen. And so once your motivation is on straight and it's God, it's his love, then we can truly start strong. We can make goals. We can make plans. We can make targets for our spiritual growth and, and some practicals of how to start strong this year. And so let's say... Your motivation is there. Maybe in reality right now, you're like, man, I need to grow my motivation. But let's say you, you got there. You're there now. Moving on. So now what do we do with that? What do you do with that motivation that's from God? What is our aim as disciples of Jesus? I just want to give a little bit of a reminder to you guys of what the goal of discipleship is. And, and what we're doing. And this is kind of goes back to a series we did last year uh, at the beginning of 2022 called Practicing the Way of Jesus. You guys remember that? If you didn't get to be a part of that midweek series, it's up on our YouTube channel. But we talked about really just what discipleship is all about. Learning Jesus's way of life, practicing his teachings, right? And, and the goals of, of any follower or student of a rabbi 
We're to, to be with your rabbi, to become like him and to do what he did. And so with Jesus, our goals of discipleship, of Christians, is to be with Jesus, to become like Jesus, and to do what Jesus did. That's why we're here. That's why we said Jesus is Lord, because we want to be with him. We want to do what he did. And so this, this is how we should filter anything we do. And as we make goals for this year, we should think about those three things, being with Jesus, becoming like him, doing what he did. And really what we're talking about here is lordship. We're talking about making Jesus the Lord of our life in every area of our life. And so for the rest of the lesson, I want to talk about how we can start strong in each of these areas of our discipleship. So starting strong with being with Christ, starting strong with becoming like him in this new year, and starting strong with doing what he did. And if we look at each of these things, what we're going to come to find out is they flow right into the other. And it's really going to help us to start strong, mainly because this is what Jesus taught. So turn your Bible over to Mark chapter 3. Hope you guys are still with me. I know we've been on break, but... uh, We're going to look at Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. So it says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. And so the first thing that we want to start strong in is being with Jesus. This is what it says here in verse 14. He appointed the 12 that they might be with him. Jesus wanted them to be with him. And obviously this moment takes place after Jesus has called each of them individually as disciples, but they're receiving this invitation just as we have to be with Jesus. And so campus Jesus wants to be with you daily, but do you want to be with him? Do you want to spend time with him, with your your king? You know, if you want to start strong spiritually, you have to start with simply spending time with Jesus. Amen. He will help you and show you how to start strong. He will do the rest. He will inspire you. He will capture your heart, but we must give him the time to change us, to provide us with the faith, with the belief that we can grow, but we have to start with just being with him. You know, it was encouraging this morning, uh, Hannah and I were trying to really grow and not getting on our phones first thing in the morning and just starting our day and basically letting God have the first word in our day, just spending time with God, um, praying together. You know, I'm, I'm very prone and used to just going to my phone. Uh, but man, it was just so refreshing just to start the day, just being with God, being in his presence, learning from his word. And so how's this going for you, right? If you want to start strong, you got to start strong with just being with Jesus. How are your times with God, even over this winter break? You know, Manny did a great lesson for us not too long ago about how to win over winter break. How's that been going? Starting strong with quality time with God. You know, we got to get in a rhythm before the spring semester starts, before you go back to classes. And hey, maybe some of you have winter classes. God bless you. We pray for you. Uh, But, you know, we got to start this rhythm of being with Jesus each and every day before life comes at us and throws those punches at us. You know, maybe you need to, if you want to start strong, maybe you need to make a reading plan for your quiet times. You know, I know for me, if I don't have a plan, my quiet times just don't go as well as they could. So do you have a plan for your times with God, for how you spend time with Jesus, for how you be with Jesus? You know, maybe you want to look into going through the Bible in a year plan. Uh, There's multiple different ways to do that. But maybe that's something that could really be beneficial to you. You know, maybe maybe there's goals you have for your prayer life. You know, prayer is such a great way to just be with Jesus, to be with God. 
You know, maybe that's having a prayer list that you more consistently go through. Maybe it's praying through the Psalms, going on prayer walks more. We all have different things that work for us. But how's it going just spending time with Jesus? You know, if you think about it, when you spend a certain amount of time with someone, with anyone, they start to rub off on you, right? You start to think of them probably a little bit more throughout the day. And sometimes you become a little bit like them if you spend enough time with someone. You know, I've spent a lot of time with Caleb over the past two years, with Caleb Brent. And uh, I'm not surprised that now I own a pair of Converse's, right? I've spent enough time around Caleb repping his Converse, everything pretty much, uh, plus Chipotle a little bit, throwback. But so, hey, now I'm starting to dress like Caleb Brent. Is that a bad thing? No, it's a great thing. He's got style. But this is just how it works, right? You spend enough time with someone, you start to kind of become like them. You know, I have some friends that it's weird, like they could just spend one hour with someone. And I'm, as I'm just hanging out, I'm just watching. I'm like, you, you're starting to talk like this guy. You just met this guy. It's so funny. I have some friends that are so good at that. And hey, amen, Caleb. I'm sure there's both good and bad ways you've become like me. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make here is when we spend more time with Jesus, we, we get Jesus rubbing off on us, which is only a good thing, right? If we start strong with quality time with Jesus, we will become more like Jesus, which is really what we're after, right? We want to become like him. That's why you're here. That's why you're a disciple. We want transformation. We want what the Bible calls sanctification. We want the spirit molding us into the image of Christ. That's what we want. But it only starts if we're spending time with Jesus himself. But then we can move on to becoming like him. So let's talk about becoming like Jesus in this new year and starting strong with that as we head into 2023. So Luke chapter 6, verse 40, Jesus says, The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. And a teacher, you know, is another way to say rabbi. And that's who Jesus was. And so our goal isn't just to stay where we are and be like, man, wow, Jesus is awesome. Wow, that disciple's awesome. No, our, our goal is to become like our teacher, our rabbi, Jesus. And so when you think about starting strong in your new year, what you got to ask yourself is, in what areas do I need to become more like Jesus? What areas in your character, in your personal life, is God exposing? He's prob probably already exposed in 2022. And now he's saying, hey, let, let's hone in on this. You know, maybe it's your patience, being a more patient person and being like Jesus in that way. Maybe it's your discipline, your self-control. Maybe it's attacking your pride and seeking humility being a humble learner. Maybe it's compassion and empathy. You want to imitate Jesus in that way. Maybe it's your integrity with school. You know, I don't know what it is for you, but we all have areas and we will for the rest of our lives that we can become more like Jesus and who he was as a person and who God is in, is in his nature. And so, as you, as you think about this idea of starting strong, think about how to start strong in making personal goals. It could just be three or two. And you're like, these are the ways I want to become more like Christ. If you can identify those, share those with people in your life, pray about them, then that's a really strong start to your year. You have accountability, you have goals, you have a plan, you have some scriptures to back that up, and then you go for it. You know, I know for me, a uh, personal goal for me just in wanting to become more like Christ is, is for me, my discipline, my self-control, uh, specifically my discipline in my prayer life. Uh, that's something that I feel like I made some strides in last year, but I'm just still not where I want to be with my uh, just discipline in my prayer life. And, and along with that, having a softer heart and God softening my heart for, for people in general. And so that's something that I'm like, hey, I, I want to grow in this. I want help with this. 
But what is it for you? And as we're becoming like Christ, which is the work of the Spirit, which is motivated by the love of God, we will start to do what Jesus did. And actually, the Bible says we're going to do some even greater things. John 14, verse 12, Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is very encouraging. And so for, for those of you on this, this call here, you know, for, for Chris, for, for Julia, for Renan, for Shania, he's saying to you, you will do even greater things than Jesus. Do we believe that? I mean, that's quite the statement to take in. And our insecurities want to combat that by saying, ah, really? But Jesus is saying it, that we're going to not only do the work he did, but greater things, because we have the authority of Jesus, of Christ. We are heirs of Christ. And so Jesus did many things. When we think about this idea of doing what Jesus did and starting strong in this year with doing what he did, you know, Jesus did a lot of things in his time on earth and his short time on earth and his short public ministry. He was, but if you want to kind of boil it all down, Jesus was a servant. He served all people and he served God. And so if you want to do what Jesus did, he's calling us to be a servant. You know, Jesus, he served every need of every kind of person. Jesus was making disciples. That's one thing Jesus clearly did, right? We're all here because Jesus decided thousands of years ago to go and make disciples. And so we should be doing that if that's what Jesus did. You know, Jesus wants us to be a part of doing what he did. So maybe for you in 2023, as you think about doing what Jesus did, maybe that's learning how to effectively study the Bible with others. You know, maybe for you, it's just learning the next two Bible studies in our Bible study series, or maybe you haven't learned the first three and you want to start there. Wherever you are, it's just having this conviction of, hey, Jesus said, I'm going to do even greater things. So I need to start doing the work that he's cut out for me to do. And I need to be a learner because he's saying I can do it. So let me go after it. Let me have a goal to learn how to help someone Make Jesus Lord. Amen. And ask for help with how to do that. Get advice, right? Get help. Uh, you know, obviously, along with that is sharing our faith. Jesus shared his faith with God. He shared about his relationship with the Father. Maybe that's something in this year God's calling you to do more, to have a conviction in, not for your glory, but to simply walk in the footsteps of Jesus. You know, another thing that Jesus clearly did is he served the poor. He, he went after and pursued justice and fought the fight against injustice. And so in what ways is that maybe a missing part in the circuitry of your discipleship? Is going after serving the needs uh, right around your community and in our city, serving the poor. You know, if we want to do what Jesus did, that will lead us to the feet. Of, of the downtrodden, you know, and so maybe it's asking for ways to do that, uh, you know, reaching out to Rachel, Rachel Lavian and asking her about some of the hope events going on. She's kind of our campus hope representative for, for New York campus. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of ways to serve. There's a lot of needs to meet, but maybe that's an area for you. I don't know. You know, maybe it's just being a, a great friend. Jesus was such a good friend. That's what he did. He was a mentor. He was a good listener. He was compassionate. Maybe you just want to be a more consistent, loyal friend and follow Jesus in that way this year. Maybe you want to just start strong with that. Maybe pull some, some brothers and some sisters in and just say, hey, listen, I want to have a strong friendship with you, right? 
just just hear that from me, bro. Hear that from me, sis. So hold me accountable. I want to be there for you. I want to, I want you to be there for me. You know, maybe you just need some extra communication with that. And you want to be like Jesus and do what he did and in, in, in that area with being an encourager, being a great friend. And really what it comes down to is just being a servant leader. That's who God's calling you and I to be. And so in short, the question that is good to ask is, what do you see Jesus doing in scripture that you are not doing? Start there. What is Jesus doing in scripture that right now is missing in your life? Now, don't go on a guilt trip. Don't freak out. But just, hey, Jesus is calling me closer to him. Amen. Get the help you need and go for it. And so how can you go after starting strong and living this out this spring semester? We still got a couple more weeks, obviously, a break. And so for some of you, this might sound a little premature, but there's nothing wrong <laughs> with, with getting ahead of the game, right? Uh, with kind of getting ahead of Satan and his schemes, out scheming Satan. And so decide what areas you want to be doing what Jesus did more. Write them down. Again, just like I shared with these other points, pray about it and let Christ motivate you to do what he did. And so let me just say this too, um, as I think this is important to mention, is that, you know, growth is slow and steady. Growth takes time, right? Growth, our spiritual growth, it, it's not pass or fail. It's, it's more so there's a longevity to it. There's a, there's a kind of, kind of an arc to our spiritual growth. And so in the first three months of this year, you're probably not going to be where you want to be. That's okay. But the question is, is there progress, right? Is there progress that's tangible that can be seen in your life? And, and the closest people in your life, are they seeing that? Because you should see it, right, in your own life. But growing takes time and that's okay. God is patient with you. Right, God, God is there with you, but we can't settle for being stagnant. Right, that is not what Christ does. Christ doesn't lead us back to our same sin. Christ doesn't lead us to a place of boredom. Right, Christ doesn't lead us to a place where we're not excited about our walk with God. Christ leads us to something new, Amen. Something fresh. He brings progress. He brings maturity if we're really going after it. And so the last couple of things I want to mention is really just talking about setting yourself up to win. You know, again, this umbrella of starting strong. There's things that you can do uh, to set yourself up to win. God has given us the agency and the ability to set our own conditions and environment for optimal spiritual growth. It's a, it's a gift that God's given us to choose that. And so a question I want to ask here as we start to close out is what is one thing you can change in your life at the beginning of this year that will help you start strong, start strong spiritually. What is one thing that you could change? That, that one thing you change is, is going to give you better soil to grow out of, preparing the soil for, for growth. I'm, I'm just going to give some examples here of different things that, that might help you to make some good soil and to start strong. Um, one, one question is who are you spending your time with? You know, maybe the one thing you need to change is, is how you're spending your time and who you spend your time with. You know, do you, do you spend your time with people that you know are going to help you grow spiritually? You know, that's one thing to maybe ask yourself about one thing that could change. Maybe it's starting your day with God, like I mentioned earlier, instead of your phone. Again, letting God have the first word in your day. That's, that's one thing you could change very practically that could have a big impact on your day-to-day -day life. Just starting with God full stop. Maybe that's one thing you could do. You know, maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's getting active, getting out there, getting off the couch, just you know, having, having some time where you can get outside and maybe it doesn't even mean you pray, 
but maybe that's one change you can make in your lifestyle. Just getting active that could help you emotionally. That could help you spiritually. Uh, that could help you physically. You know, it's all intertwined. We're spiritual beings. You know, maybe one thing is taking a break from social media in general, right? Uh, we don't want to be legalistic about it, but I think, hey, there's a time and place just to say, you know what? In order for me to start strong this year, I just got to get off Instagram. I just got to get off TikTok or Twitter or whatever. Maybe it's YouTube. Um, but you're just, hey, I, I just, I need a break. In order for me to start strong, I need a break. The noise of social media in the modern world, it, it makes us deaf to the voice of God in, in a lot of cases. And so don't let that drown out uh, the, the input that we need most from God. Don't be getting more input from your media than you do from God. You know, maybe God is calling you to take a break in general, just from the things that are capturing your heart more than Christ. You know, there, there's things that we all care about in our life. You know, maybe maybe it's, um, you know, a hobby that we have, a career, uh, or a romantic interest, whatever it might be. Those things aren't inherently bad, but just, just kind of reflecting and asking, do I care more about this thing that's not Christ than I do my walk with God? And it doesn't mean you have to not talk to someone anymore or not pursue your career, but it's just maybe trying to look at that through the filter of is Christ Lord in this area? The last thing I'll mention is again, under this idea of one thing you could change to start strong. Maybe it's just think about what am I putting in? Maybe it's thinking about different music you could listen to. Maybe for, for two weeks, you just want to listen to music that's only edifying spiritually, you know? Only you know what that is. Uh, that could be a hard one for a lot of us. But maybe you're just going to decide, you know what, I'm just going to take in spiritual Christian content and, and let the spirit work through that. And, and, and not again, not to have a legalistic nature, but hey, sometimes there's a time and a place to make these decisions. And so the real question is, are you willing? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to start strong? Or are there areas where you're going to compromise? Because if we're not willing to, to do whatever we need to do to fulfill God's purpose for our lives, which is to represent Christ, which is to bear God's image, to be his representatives, representatives on earth, if we're not willing to do anything to do that, then we got to start there, right? We got to go back to our motivation. We got to go back to our lordship. And so please, please, if your motivation is, is not where it needs to be, start there. Start with Christ, start with his love, getting inspired by Jesus himself. And so what do you want to grow in, in this new year? You don't need to have New Year's resolutions, right? Those are great. And hey, amen, have them. But more so, I think what we need to have is spiritual decisions, that it's not just because it's a new year that we make spiritual decisions. There's a natural thing to that. Hey, it's a new year. But we should be making spiritual decisions all the time. But especially as we come, come through this natural uh, season as we head into the new year. And so now I just want to let you guys kind of reflect on some of these things. I know I, I threw a lot at you. Um, and, and just get some time to, to just sit right now and just think about what are some things that stuck out to you? Uh, what are some things that you feel like, you know what, when it comes to being with Jesus, when it comes to becoming like Jesus and doing what he did, here's areas with those that I really want to focus on. And so I'll give you guys, uh, let's say, three to five minutes here just to reflect. And if you're with people, feel free to, you know, maybe share with, with those that are with you there. But try your best just to take time to think about what this means for you. Jot some things down, take a note on your phone. And then in about three to five minutes, we'll have a time of sharing and uh, we'll share some things that we're excited to grow in. So, uh, amen.